And now, please welcome Mandela Washington Fellows and 2017 Regional Advisory Board Chairpersons, Ruzi Bo Chonyera, Osman Bar, and Ruzi Bo drive development through innovation and collaboration. In honor of where we are today, let me greet you in the tongue spoken by a great Southern African king, Shaka Zulu. Saubona. Saubona. Saubona is so much more than just a greeting. It is an acknowledgement. It is a powerful statement of acknowledgement. Saubona means, I see you. Saubona means, I acknowledge your presence. I am thankful for you, brother, sister, business partner, friend, mentor. I see the work of your hands. I see you, the future of Africa. I see you, our committed partners and stakeholders, who make all of this possible for us. We are thankful for the continued support network that we have as the Mandela Washington Fellows. We are grateful to IREX and USAID for the opportunities that bring us together to collaborate and grow and do so much more. For speaker travel grants that enable us to share our work internationally. For collaboration grants that enable us to work together to build and grow projects that we have developed together during the course of the past one year. For professional practicums and access to outstanding individuals who mentor us and encourage us and hold our hands on this journey. As the East Africa Regional Advisory Board Chair, I wish to extend my eternal thanks and gratitude to the team that I've worked with over the past year. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in acknowledging Asunta, Aniela, Emily, Narcisse, Henry, Ahmed, Josephine, Helena, and Martha. I see you. In other African words, that speaks to me, Ubuntu. A word that can be paraphrased to mean a shared and intertwined common purpose and existence only made possible <coughs> by a collective effort. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's give to Africa a resounding Ubuntu. When I say Africa, please repeat Ubuntu. Africa. Ubuntu. Africa. Ubuntu. Africa. Ubuntu. Let's remember that South Africa, our host country, is a nation in mourning. As we join them in mourning the recent passing of the mother of the nation, Mama Winnie Mandela, and remember and celebrate the birth of the century, centenary of the birth of Nelson Mandela. There is little to add to the eulogy of these great African giants. But this gathering reminds all of us the principles and the values that 
unite us here today were the core values of their lives. They lived and practiced what we aspire to. And the world can only marvel and celebrate the change they brought to their communities and to human legacy. As the West African Regional Advisory Board Chair, I would like to acknowledge and thank with all my gratitude the fellows community and the West African Regional Advisory Board members here present who have tirelessly worked over the year with me. Pedro, Yuki, Jessica, Tonto, Joseph, Adolphus, Francine, and Aisha, you have displayed Ubuntu over the year. I see you. Another interesting African phrase is Kenako. It is time. Yeah. Allow me to take you through a journey back in time. The journey we have traveled as Mandela Fellows over the past year has been nothing short of incredible. It is a journey that has been marked by highs and lows and yet punctuated by our hopes and dreams. We have shined through and triumphed over our struggles. We have made lifelong relationships and friendships. We have experienced places, cultures and opportunities that seemed impossible a mere 12 months ago. And yet here we are, stronger professionally and personally, forever united by our common purpose for a vision of a peaceful, prosperous, and progressive Africa. Over the next two days, remember that it is time for us as energized youth drivers of development and innovation to collaborate to share skills, to share knowledge and experiences so that we can scale up the Yali and multiply this, what we do together. This, I believe, is the true spirit of Yali, bringing together thousands of energized, motivated and skilled young African leaders to spark change and retell the story of Africa. Like in response to our father's Madiba's call so many years ago, he said, each of us has the ability and responsibility to start changing the world for the better. It begins with us. As Southern Africa RAB Chair, I would like to express my deep gratitude to a power team, a team that has worked tirelessly throughout the year. <laughs> Shout out to Tabo, Taban, Ero, Vitumbiko, Anna, Tiniso, Joanne, Mbolatin, Moyo, I salute you. I see you. And to the fellows who work towards addressing gender-based violence, to the fellows who are creative problem solvers, developing innovative products and solutions, to the fellows who work towards helping us achieve food security. To the fellows who work towards achieving peace throughout their work in conflict resolutions. To the fellows who seek to overcome barriers to access to education. To the fellows who have been absolutely amazing. I see you. We see you. Africa sees you. The world sees you. We are a true reflection of Ubuntu and Kenako. It is time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mandela Washington Fellowship Continental Conference. It is now my absolute honor to introduce the speaker who will be coming on this stage. Alicia Phillips Mandeville has over 20 years of international development experience in the public and private and also non-profit sector. Her career has been pioneered and has had new thinking and tools at the intersections of governance, economic development and technology. She is the current Vice President for Global Programs with IREX. A round of applause for Alicia Phillips Mandeville. Good morning. 
uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship Continental Conference of 2018. Good morning. And on behalf of all of my colleagues at IREX, I am absolutely honored to bring their welcome to you as well and to welcome you today. Um, uh, I want to welcome the leaders and the guests who are gathered here today, it's most especially the Mandela Washington Fellows yourselves. Um, I want to welcome and thank our colleagues from the United States government, um, also the representatives of all the United States institutions with whom you've worked over the last year or two that are here today, um, as well as our conference sponsors who are listed in the back of the program. I also want to acknowledge and call out and respect the deep work done by the Regional Advisory Board over the last uh, time, period of time, working closely with IREX and with our regional implementing organizations to make sure that this next to today and tomorrow bring together both the content and the spirit that sets up a platform to set you up um, and to make sure that we reflect the true spirit of this fellowship. I'm especially happy to be here today personally um, because IREX is celebrating its own 50th anniversary back in Washington, D.C. today. In fact, it, they'll, they'll sit down in several hours and, and, and do much of the same. Um, at the 50 year mark, we are proud of the contributions that we've made in the world and we are especially proud of the contribution that we've made to support this fellowship and to support each of you. Um, to be able to bring to bear five decades of experience in education and leadership development and transcontinental exchanges to support a group like this, I can't think of a better way to pursue our mission of inclusive, just, and prosperous societies, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate an anniversary than right here in the room with you all. So thank you for that honor and for that opportunity. Since this program began in 2014, we have supported 3,000 leaders across the continent in 49 countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Over that window, we've worked, we'll add another 700 this summer to the fold. It's an amazing number of amazing people. Over the, that four-year period of time, we've partnered with over 500 institutions, both in the United States and across Africa, whether those are private sector companies, civil society organizations, multilateral institutions, or public sector offices in a variety of countries. Each of them have worked with us to create opportunities for all of the fellows. Um, mentorship and skills building is a key piece of this leadership program, and these are the organizations that have really created the practical moments for learning and for doing. So to all of you representing those organizations, thank you for that. Um, and speaking of our partners, I can't talk about the work here or the, this fellowship without mentioning the three regional implementing partners with whom we work, whether that is WAXI in Ghana, who is our West Africa regional organization, uh, VSO in Kenya, who works with us on the East Africa implementation side, and here in Johannesburg, the South, Southern Africa Trust, who works across the southern region. The work we do isn't possible without them, whether that is events like this one or whether that is the day-to-day -day management of the fellowship. So to you all, thank you as well, and, and see the work that you have done today. Um, I'll come to our United States government partners in a moment and invite them to come up and speak to you as well, but I want to speak to the most important part of this equation first, which is each of you, the, the fellows here today. Um, this continent-wide network, gathered for the first time all together in one room in a year here on the continent, is remarkable for the experiences that it brings, for the momentum that it generates, and for the opportunities that it not only creates, but seizes. Um, and events like this can often feel like a transition from one stage to another, but I want to call out and recognize that they're also the beginning of what is next. And so kind of as we think about that, I want to talk about a 2017 fellow from Burundi. Uh, Javier Mani Rakiza returned to his home in Burundi after his fellowship last year, and he took some time to really build out his leadership development platform. That can, that can take a bit, but he said that that process gave him the confidence and the clarity to know not only who he wanted to be, but what he wanted to be for his community. And it gave him the spirit he needed to set up, to start the process of registering his own organization, Dreaming for Change. And as of January of this year, that organization is up and running and bringing business skills to women in Burundi who otherwise have very limited chance of, of their own income. Uh, Javier drew on the broad Mandela Washington Fellows and Yali network to put this together. He built a board that includes his host institute, Appalachian State University, um, a 2017 fellow from Zimbabwe, Natalie Foti, and a regional leadership center participant from neighboring Rwanda. And to put the whole thing together, he drew on the experience he had through his practicum with World Vision in Burundi. So you can hear how all the different moving pieces of this YALI program and the Mandela Washington Fellowship come together and can literally make dreaming a reality. 
And so with that as kind of the segue and the thinking about how we go forward, I do want to turn to our USG colleagues and, and invite them to come to speak um, because they represent here in person what I hope you see as the United States' deep commitment to the strength and the power of the leadership that's represented here today and that it's an honor to meet and speak with. Um, so with that, let me introduce uh, John Grork, who is the USA Mission Director for South Africa. His portfolio includes regional programs and bilateral assistance in South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho, and the Kingdom of Eswatini. He was previously the mission director in Pakistan, Haiti, and Morocco. Before that, he was the uh, deputy mission director in Egypt and Iraq. And before that, the regional legal advisor in places in the Middle East, West Africa, and South Asia. Um, I know, I spoke with him this morning, I know he's delighted to speak with you all today as well. And so with that, I'd like to welcome John Grook. Uh, thank you, Alicia, and thank you, Caniso, for that wonderful Academy Award-worthy performance. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Ambassador Harrington, uh, Alicia Phillips Mandeville, Dr. Mampela Rampele, Washington uh, Mandela Fellow, Fellow Class of 2017, Dumela, and welcome to South Africa. Um, I'm particularly impressed with the work that the regional advisory boards and IRECs have done to organize this continent-wide conference. I understand that in the past, uh, the conferences were held uh, by region, and so clearly a lot of work went into this. But it's also clear that there's a great benefit that will come out of this, because it will give all of you an opportunity to meet and talk with and network with your colleagues from all corners of the continent. So this is a great opportunity for you uh, to take advantage of that. I understand that the theme of the conference is energizing African youth to drive development through innovation and collaboration. And I know from my involvement with this initiative uh, that uh, you who represent the very best of African youth are going to bring energy and creative ideas to this conference. Um, I'm particularly pleased to introduce uh, the next speaker, Ambassador Matthew Harrington. He is currently the Ac Acting Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Africa Bureau. Ambassador Harrington is a career member of the U.S. Foreign Service, and he has spent much of his career either here in Africa or working on matters concerning Africa. He served as the ambassador the United States Ambassador to Lesotho from 2014 to 2017. And before that, he was the Director of the Office of Analysis for Africa in the Bureau of Intelligence and Research. He has worked, as I said, in many African countries and worked on matters concerning African countries, including Namibia, Togo, Zimbabwe, Sudan, and Ghana. And prior to joining the U.S. Foreign Service, Ambassador Harrington served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Mauritania. And when I learned about that, I thought, Ambassador Har Harrington should have been working for USAID. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry that we missed him. So with that, um, Ambassador Harrington, please. Good morning. It is a real pleasure to be here today uh, and to welcome you to the Mandela Washington Fellowship Continental Conference. I want to start by saying thank you to the, the fellows who provided us with their inspiring remarks to get us started. That was fantastic. I want as well to, to thank my fellow speakers, John Grork uh, from USAID and Alicia Mandeville from IREX, who have provided so much support, not only to this conference, uh, but to all of the other elements which make YALI such a fantastic program. I've been a fan of, of, the, of the YALI program of the Young African Leaders Initiative for a long time. And when I was ambassador in Lesotho from 2014 to 2017, I looked forward to every opportunity to engage with the YALI fellows who inspired me truly with their creativity and their energy and their innovative ideas. So it, I'm really delighted to be a part of this conference today. And I've heard the exact same sentiment from ambassadors across the continent about their engagements uh, with YALI members. So it is entirely appropriate, I think, uh, that you'll be addressing the next few days the, the theme, Energizing African Youth to Drive Development Through Innovation 
and collaboration. There is so much energy, talent, and vision in this room, and I am anxious to see what positive outcomes emerge from your discussions over the next few days. Someone mentioned it earlier, but I, I want to reiterate, I think it's important to recognize that we are meeting here in South Africa in 2018, uh, the centenary of the birth of Nelson Mandela, which provides a meaningful opportunity for all of us, I think, to reflect on his legacy as a leader and nation builder. Officially launched in 2014 with 500 fellows, the fellowship named after Nelson Mandela has grown into a large and enduring network of young African leaders who are improving transparency and accountability of governments, starting and growing their own businesses, and ultimately serving their communities. Mandela Washington Fellows are, in short, having an impact. Let me cite just a few statistics. Of the 3,000 participants so far in the Mandela Washington Fellowship, more than 40% own their own businesses, more than 40% lead their own non-governmental organizations, and an increasing percentage are serving in public office. Fellows are making waves, not only in Africa, but around the world. 2015 fellow, Jean Bosco Nzeyimana uh, from Rwanda, was named by Forbes magazine as one of Africa's 30 most promising entrepreneurs, under 30, for the second year in a row. Pretty impressive. Jean Bosco is the CEO of a company that provides integrated waste management services and processes waste into environmentally friendly fuels. 2016 fellow Nise Lengete of from Kenya was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People for 2018. <laughs> Nise is working as a project manager with AMREF Health Africa, raising awareness about female genital mutilation and child marriage, and is challenging the status quo in male-dominated communities. These are just two of many success stories, and I know that all of you in this room are creating your own success stories. During your six weeks as 2017 fellows and during regional training sessions, many of you traveled to places you had never seen, never been to before. Uh, I suspect the anticipation must have been nerve wracking for some of you, but you over quickly overcame any anxieties about confronting the unknown and embraced a new country, new food, different weather, different cultures, and maybe even new ways of looking at the world. You quickly bonded as colleagues and then as friends, and now it's clear as family. In some ways, this conference is like a family reunion. Yeah. Yeah. Yali members, you all clearly have a deep commitment to one another and want to see each other succeed, and that's fantastic. Because of you and Yali fellows before you, in just a few short years, the Yali brand has earned an exceptional reputation among American and African policymakers, members of the business community and civil society. Empowering youth is at the heart of the US-Africa partnership, which also focuses on cooperating to promote security and good governance, prosperity and opportunity. And we believe all of these goals are intertwined. One of the special things about YALI is its sustainability. Back in August 2017, as the Washington Summit wrapped up and you said goodbye to your new YALI brothers and sisters, maybe you thought, you know what, this is the end of a, of, a, of a fantastic experience. Now you know better. It was the beginning. The beginning of the next chapter of your lives in your home countries and the beginning of a long-term commitment to transforming your communities. Many of you are active in your alumni associations where you network with the Yale family and the alumni of other US government programs. And I really hope you'll continue to do that. These associations create the potential for all kinds of exciting and innovative programs and keep the Yale spirit alive and growing. Some of you have helped our embassies recruit the next, uh, the next cohort of fellows. Others have competed successfully for US government grants to launch programs on all sorts of things, including good governance, civic education, disability rights, and women's empowerment. Many of you are promoting human rights, 
advancing opportunities for women and girls, and protecting the environment. You were selected for YALI because of your talent, potential, and commitment to your countries and to your communities. Because you are blessed with special gifts and have been part of this amazing program in YALI, you also bear a special responsibility, in my view, uh, to help build a better future for Africa. I urge you to empower those around you to be active members of their communities and to engage actively in pressing for good governance, building more prosperous economies, and forging strong civil societies. I also encourage you to look for opportunities to mentor young people on your own or through the professional op development opportunities offered through uh, the U.S. government in your countries. Please share your experiences, your skills, and expertise, particularly with those who could use a good role model. As we gather here today, 700 fellows are beginning their fellowship in the United States. They're starting their six-week institutes. And by September, they will, they will join the approximately 3,000 Mandela Washington fellows and more than 7,000 from the regional leadership centers as YALI alumni. I urge you to connect with them through the YALI network, which includes more than half a million aspiring young African leaders. Half a million aspiring young African leaders. The YALI network may have begun as a virtual community, yet the power of the network lies in its offline engagement. And this is where you come in. Network members are e eager to learn from you. While the YALI network gives rising young leaders a platform to exchange ideas online, think of the changes you could make by connecting in person with the hundreds or thousands of network members who are nearby. So be sure to fulfill your pledge to share your knowledge by holding a YALI Learns event, and do take advantage of the opportunity, opportunities that are offered through the regional leadership centers. In conclusion, remember that YALI did not turn you into leaders. You were leaders already when we found each other through YALI. The purpose of YALI is to give you the tools to, make you, to help you make even more of a difference to transform the communities in which you live. I hope you will enjoy the conference, that you will enjoy each other's company, and enjoy working together on whatever comes next. And I just want to thank you for your commitment to making a difference and for inspiring so many of us along the way. Thank you very much.